Hi folks, it's Andy again with another video in the Gadosha game development series. And in this one I want to show how I implemented this moving sky background which is looks like nebulas with uh, stars as well. So this is like a parallax background, it moves at a different rate to the terrain background. So let's see how we did that. So this is the main scene and we have the parallax background node and I added a color rectangle which I've called sky as a child of the parallax background. Now the color rectangle is not usually associated with a parallax background but it has to be in this position in the scene tree so it is actually visible and not behind the background. So we use the color rectangle so that we can define its dimensions. In this case we went to layout and made it a full rectangle to fill the viewport. Looking at the node properties we have set the color to white and it doesn't matter about that because we are going to use a shader to create this background image. So in the material slot we have got a shader material and it's called star-sky.shader so if we edit this we can see in the shader editor we've got a shader type of canvas item and I made a note that the original code that I adapted this from came from shader toy so this shader was originally written in the, the usual shader language and needed a few translations to get it into a compatible format for use in Godot engine so this shader type is for a 2D canvas, we call it a canvas item shader. And we have three inputs which uh, we call uniforms. And the first one being an integer value, which allows us to play around with the produced patterns. And I found an input of five gave a nice looking nebula effect. And the next one is the viewport size. So if we were to resize the game viewport and we want to be able to scroll it left and right. So we have this X offset input, which is continually updated in the game loop. So moving on to the code itself, we have a varying, which allows us to pass values globally throughout this script. And it's the vertex value, which I have called VTX. And this first function is a modulus function. Modulus is usually applied to integers, but this is a way to get the same effect with. So in this case, we, we're doing x mod 289. And I don't know why, that's just the way this code has been written. Okay, this first one is for a vector 3 input, and then the same function basically, but for a vector 2 input. Then we've got a permute function which produces something with a, this formula with an input from one of these functions. Next there is a simplex noise function with the credit for where that originally came from here. And I don't really know how this works, but it's just a cut and paste. It looks like this function takes a vertex point input and outputs a random point based upon that point. And this function looks like it has a vertex point input with a and produces a float value output. And we have a function to convert from RGB to the HSV way of specifying a color value. Then another credit for where this next piece of code came from to produce stars. So we have an input value for X, uh, the number of cells that they are spread over the size of the stars and their brightness level. And we have a fractal nebula function which has input coordinates, the color value and the transparency. And then we have a main image function which has an input of a coordinate and it gets the resolution as a float based on the maximum viewport size and I've just noticed a bug where this must be X I believe because it's choosing which edge of the viewport is the maximum length so it should be X and Y and I'll have to see if that's made any difference to the image later so this calculates a coordinate value by dividing the, the actual frag coordinate x y value by the resolution 
Uh, we have some VEC3s for the result, and the Nebula Color 1, Nebula Color 2, and then the final result is adding in Nebula 1 and Nebula 2, and adds in the star at this coordinate. And this is where we finally get to the Godot way of doing shader things, where we have the void vertex function. So our varying value VTX is assigned vertex plus this X offset. And in the fragment shader function, we set the color of the current point on the image to the value returned by the main image, given the vertex points that we pass in. Now let's see if that little change I made messes anything up. Hopefully not. It still looks yeah, the same, I think. Yep. Now we need some code to interface from the main script to the sky's shader. So I added a script to the sky node. Rather than making a scene with the color rectangle and attached script and instancing it in the main scene, I added the color rectangle directly here and attached the script. Then you can right click on the node and attach a script by clicking there and selecting the script. So this is our sky.gd script and it extends the color rectangle. I gave it a class name of gsky and I export a variable which we can change in the inspector. And this is the scroll scale. So this gives it a similar to a parallax layer where you can set the, the scale of scrolling so it's got a different relative speed to the terrain scale so it's slower and I've set it to 0.7 so it's 70% uh, of the scroll speed of the terrain to make it look further away in the background and then we've got a function called resize this is called when we from the main scene when the the viewport area is resized. So that needs to set the rectangle size of this color rectangle to the new size and also pass the value into our shader. We had a uniform called viewport size. So we pass in this size value to it. To do that, we reference our material and this as a set shader parameter function. So we pass the parameter name and then the value into it. And as the game runs, we need to continually update the offset so we pass that into this set offset function which again sets a shader parameter called x offset with a value which is the negative of this offset value times the scroll scale so if we look at the main script so we have a variable for the sky position sky pos equals zero and in the ready function we need to find our our sky node so we just go we have a variable here we call var sky and it is of type g sky like we defined in the sky.gd script and we assign a reference to it by finding the node called sky and when the game is running the process delta function calls move background with the, the scrolling speed times delta and in move background we get this delta function and we add it to the sky pos value and we pass in this sky pos value as the offset into our set offset function in the sky script so this is how we implement this nebula like background and scroll it left and right as the game proceeds so that's it for this video and I hope to see you again. Please like and subscribe. Have a great day.